Hello there. So, I'm currently driving back to Grand Con. Um, I was there earlier today, and today's day one, by the way, it's Friday. And uh, I played in a game of Savage Rifts from 10 till 2.30 today. It was supposed to end at 2. We played till t- about 2.30. And uh, with Sean Patrick fan and the, the creator of Savage Rifts and Shine Tar, as well as as well as a lot of other great things. And uh, cool guy, very cool. Um, a lot of fun to play with. The So here's what I will say about that. Savage Rifts is... Basically, it's Savage Worlds with the Rift setting. And they... I think they did a good job, for the most part, of um, porting over the Rift's setting to Savage Worlds. I will say that. It, it's, it feels very fluid. It makes a lot of sense. Um, it's, it's on par, for the most part, with what a Rift's game kind of would feel like. However, it's still Savage Worlds, um, which is fine. I mean, I've read the, the Savage Rift's books. Well, I've skimmed them, and uh, I've played Savage Worlds Shine Tar before. Um, which is a fun, fun setting as well for, for Savage Worlds. And, uh, you know, it's fun. It, it really is fun. I think you have to have the right people for any, any game, really. You need the right kind of people, the right groups. And what I will say is Savage Worlds is advertised as this really quick-paced game. And I think it could be with people who really know the system in the game. Um, but when not everybody does it, no matter what, it's a little bit slower for me personally. I don't think the dice rolling, the way the mechanics work is very intuitive. Um, for example, you may be long range for a round. So you decide to use shooting Well, shooting might be a D 12 and obviously you roll a wild die. So it's D12 and a D6. So you'd roll both of those and take the higher the number. If either of them are the max number, you they explode and you roll it again and add it to the previous total until they stop exploding. You don't add the 12 and the 6 together ever. Um, you just don't... It doesn't work that way. Um... And so it's a lot of numbers. In fact, the game in general, I think, automatically forces you to think, to talk in numbers, you know? Um, It takes a little bit of role play out of it, you know? It can lead to some role play moments, but in that moment, for the next 10 seconds or whatever, it's rolling and adding and doing math. So you're pulled from the game mentally to do the math, Um, you know? and, And... that, so that isn't something that I'm that into. Uh, again, I think the game will be fun. I'm going to run it for my home groups um, because I still think it's a, a cool game. It, it does things that other systems don't. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's not my favorite system, I guess is all I'm really trying to say. Um, and, you know, I've played with two GMs. I've watched it played with other people before. Uh, even with people who are experienced. And it's still just not as quick as, for example, a D20 system. Um, Now, I'm a Palladium fan, obviously. One of the things I like about Palladium is the active defense, which, again, it slows down combat. Everybody knows that. However, when it does slow down combat, it's not because you're trying to do math. It's because another person is rolling also. So now they're rolling a number and you're rolling a number and you're just trying to see who wins. Um, So I I like that about Palladium. Uh, Obviously, I grew up on Palladium, so for me it seems really simple. But it might not be in the grand scheme of things. I I think I'm really far removed from having that, um, that perspective that would work in that regard, I think. Um, I... You know, it's a D20 roll or a percentile roll, and you're beating a target number. Uh, The D20 roll only has to beat, if I remember correctly, I think it was a 4 
for a melee attack. Or no. Yeah, I don't remember. It's been a <laughs> it's been a while since I played a Palladium game or ran a Palladium game. Um, but yeah, if they don't roll to defend it, it's like a four that you have to beat, which is not hard. Um, I think with a like a, a with a um, projectile. So if you're shooting them or throwing something at them, it's like a four. Maybe it's a seven. But I'm pretty sure it's a four. Um, and then if it's melee. Usually, if someone's a trained fighter, I think they get an auto parry. So it's what you're always rolling against their number. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, still like I think both systems are, are cool. They're they're fun. I think that Palladium allowing them to make savage rifts could get people to buy some Palladium books. You know, I think that's that was a good idea. Um, didn't hurt anything. You know, all it I mean, it increased exposure. I think there's probably more Savage Worlds players right now than there are Palladium players. So I think that is good. Um, you know, so anytime you can increase your exposure, I think it's a, a good choice. Um, but yeah, so I played a Glitter Boy today. Uh, got to shoot my boom gun a couple times, blew off the face of a building, and then I uh, blew up. Well, I didn't blow up. I killed a group of about four uh, Reaper juicers and um, yeah, that was kind of cool I did it in a tunnel though so <laughs> blew everyone's eardrums out that was kind of cool um, but yeah, it was fun I, I am looking forward to playing again I'm playing Sunday with Sean Patrick Fannin uh, my old GM is playing Brett Brett Smith, uh, he's going to be playing. Uh, my wife is going to play. She's played Shintar with me at Brett's house in the past. Um, beyond that, I don't know who all is playing. But again, I think that'll be a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So, uh, on top of that, today we went to, or I went to the world building seminar. I was going to try and go to another one, but with that game running doing an overrun, I missed uh, a different seminar uh, about game design, um, but that's okay, I mean, you know, it's, it's whatever, um, but the, I did catch the world building seminar, which was something I was looking forward to, and I thought it was pretty good, you know, I took some notes, there, there were a couple points that um, I think they're spot on about that I will probably need to incorporate a little more into my own world building. It's always fascinating listening to creative minds discuss their process and things that they have to consider uh, and, and stuff like that. So, again, that was really cool, and I'm looking forward to part two tomorrow, which is supposed to be a little more advanced. Uh, and tomorrow there's a few other seminars I'm going to. I think I'm going to about three seminars tomorrow. And then tomorrow night my wife is going to join me to play some games uh, up there. Some board games and stuff. And uh, possibly buy some things. So that'll be cool. Uh, looking forward to it. Couldn't be happier. And uh, yeah, so that was my first day at Grand Con. Um, so yeah, if you couldn't make it, you should try to come next year. Uh, if you live locally to Grand Rapids, Michigan, try to get out there this weekend. You know, Saturday is a busy day. Come on out. Sunday will be a good day as well. So there's, there's tons of games going on. You can come and join in. So that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.